Good afternoon. Oh, no. But, uh, Edmund, shut the door for you, sir. There you go. Good, <laughs> Good afternoon. Hello there. Um, this is Matt Beamer with my friend Joseph from Lloyd Vic Consulting. Um, today he has been kind enough to meet me in England um, to have an interview and show me his, um, his lovely um, Mitsubishi Shogun. Um, so basically, yeah, this is an interview, asking him some questions. Um, obviously, Joseph is a YouTuber. And um, what is your channel about, Joseph? My channel started uh, as a way to um, showcase my business, which is uh, sourcing vehicles to people. Um, it's a little bit different now to what I thought it would be at the start. Um, I thought it might be a sort of way that you know, people would say, oh, you've done a wonderful review with a, a nice shiny car, and um, you know, I'd like you to find me a nice shiny car. But really, it's, uh, it's branched off into the sort of more enthusiast territory now. There, there are general reviews that get a lot of traffic, uh, such as Modern MG stuff does very well on my channel. Um, they make very good cars anyway, so that's not surprising. Yeah. But uh, there's lots of other older cars which do well now. And um, I've been to a lot of car shows which um, people will stop me walking around and trying to compose myself as I um, talk about what I see. Um, which we call the slightly shambolic shuffles because they are very shambolic and um, you know I'm just sort of shuffling around and trying not to fall over which uh, you know hasn't happened yet but it did it almost happened once when I did I almost fell over in one of my videos but actually the auto stabilization of the camera saved me ah, um, that's good. so yeah it's, it's uh, something that I was surprised actually did well the stuff I thought might do well which is a lot of the ones that are reviews of more modern cars um, that aren't MGs and also um, some sort of vice videos as how to you know what to look for when you're buying a car. Yeah, those don't do particularly well. That's surprising, but I, I do really love your um, shambolic shuffles. They're one of my favourite types that you do. Yeah, I don't I don't know why, but people seem to really love those. Um, I'm not. They don't, they don't take me long to film because literally they're they're not really edited. They are quite literally using a pause button on the phone yeah. and that's all the editing I normally do and uh, you know people spend ages making videos of shows um, generally but I, I literally just walk around and use the pause button um, unfortunately that means you get inaccurate commentary wind noise announcements background noise but I think you I do, say the viewers to love them I think you do an amazing job because I know how difficult it is it is, it is to hard speak. yeah, yeah. Obviously, Ian Seabrook from Hubnut is the expert at those things. Yeah, yeah. Well, while on the topic of other channels, um, we were supposed to meet up with um, Ben from yeah. Planet Auto today. Yeah, but we were, yeah. No, this not week. today, this week, on That's Thursday. Right. What was the show called? It's the Autosport International Show in Birmingham. Ah, okay. Um, but obviously, for logistical reasons, it hasn't quite worked out. No, yeah. And I can't go up to the um, Birmingham myself due to family reasons. Mm. It's a shame, really, but next time I'm over, I hope I will meet Ben too. You'll be back, sir, won't you? I will be back, yes. <laughs> okay, um, another question about your channel. Is it related to a business? Well, it is, yes. Yes, it is, because uh, um, generally the cars I source for, for clients, they're not um, often the cars that are featured on the channel, actually. There have been two examples of cars which I've sourced for clients and they've said I can and review them, and that was the... Um, 1998 Audi A3 it was one of the first cars I ever saw professionally. Oh, wow. um, and the 2016 Seat Leon ST, um, although the traffic on those has been pretty bad. Okay. So, um, yeah, it, it really depends uh, on the actual client and what's around of the day within, you know, it's given radius of um, the where they live as to what actually I will find um, for them. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, you know, it would be lovely to, you know, always find, I don't know, Mark II for all Granadas, um, Caprice, and, uh, you know, Triumph Dolomites, things like that for clients, and I'm sure my channel will be more popular if that's exclusively what I featured, but um, the reality is most people are looking for very normal cars, they're looking for things which, um, you know, are affordable to run, affordable to buy, affordable to insure, yeah. and reliable, and, uh, you know, that generally means you end up with stuff like uh, i don't know kia seeds yeah voxel astras things like that it's all decent Usual cars stuff. it's yeah. just uh you know i think a lot of viewers on my channel would say that those probably aren't the most exciting things but 
Yeah. A lot of the people I think who watch maybe your channel and mine, they have multiple cars. That's They're true. very into them and they have, you know, other more exciting things as well as an everyday car. And we recognise that actually for a lot of people, having an everyday car that's a modern one isn't a bad idea. Now, there are some people who would say that you don't need to do that and but generally they're people who are very mechanically minded and who just hate a lot of the features of the modern cars and I can understand that too yeah yeah um but uh, it doesn't doesn't tend to be that I you know get to sort of tap into that market too much it's normally you know much more kind of ordinary things yeah, yeah. which is which is fine you know that's uh, that's my bread and butter yeah that's true and what's your age what kind of age group no, what kind of age group uses you the most i've had people right the way through from uh, early twenties through to sort of late sixties. Oh, that's very good. Uh, it can be, it can be, you know, I've, I, I, it's, um, it's not gender specific either. Um, it could be any type of person. But actually, one of the people who I did a job for was my cousin, who literally just wasn't, wasn't particularly um, um, able at the time to um, uh, actually find a car for himself. He didn't have the time. He knew perfectly well what he really what he wanted, but he just needed an extra kind of person that helped make a decision. And he, you yeah. know, he he built his own catering racing car. So, oh wow! Um, it wasn't like he didn't know anything. He always knew too much. It's like, well, I I I just can't decide. And often I'm a bit like that myself. I mean, you know, it takes me a long time to make a decision about what sort of normal car that, that we will own. Um, yeah. It takes ages. Whereas if I'm buying something to go to Santa Pod or something like that and just for more less than five hundred pounds, yeah, that'll be quite easy to do. Um, whereas something to, that I'll keep for maybe three, four years. Um, and in the case of both the cars we've had, we've actually kept them for a long time now. Yeah. Um, and both of them have been very good. Um, that takes a little bit longer to decide. And, you know, you should consider the next car you buy quite carefully. That's true. It, it, it does cost a lot of money um, when you're buying a car, and you need to know all the facts. And if the car is not properly checked, if it's a particular model that has a lot of problems then you can end up spending an unnecessary amount of money on it now don't get me wrong I mean sometimes you know people will buy say I don't know a Peugeot 207 like the one that I featured on my channel and they'll love it and it won't go wrong but I find with certain cars and that's one of them that actually they do have more problems than average yeah and I'm not afraid to sort of say um particularly with that video and the one about Nissan Juke that I did, that, you know, I don't like the car, or with the per case of the Peugeot, they have a lot of problems. And I think people need to know that. Yes. Um, you've got to be careful when you, you're viewing someone else's car and you're being critical of it. You've got to be careful about that. Um, and most of the cars I review, I, I do quite like. Yeah. Um, you know, there are certain ones that I'm not so keen on, and, um, you know, you can maybe sense that but most of them are fine um, particularly the, the newer ones um, there are few cars on the market now that I would say are bad some of them are bland some of them are too expensive yeah. some of them have a frustrating in certain respects yeah but in terms of a, a, a bad car that will let you down um, there aren't too many of those on, on the market that are brand new second hand there are many <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, that's obviously my, my sort of way that I, that I do things is to wade through the, the market and try to sort of source the best possible thing that I can find. And is there any cars that you're limited to, like would you go and find a Ferrari for someone, or are you more...? I, I, I would do, although someone who wants a Ferrari would need someone who's actually a specialist in Ferrari. That's true, And that's yeah. not that's not really me, I'm not a specialist in any one particular make. Um, there are certain types of car I know more of than, than others. I mean, you know, I know MGs because we've had an MG for a long time. Um, I know Volkswagen Group cars quite well. Um, I know many Japanese cars quite well. Um, but things like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, I'm not an expert on those yeah. really. Would, um, for example, if my viewers who love the One Series, mm -hmm. would you be able to find them the One Series? Yeah. That's cool. I, I, should, I should think so, yeah. They're quite a common car, actually. They, they are in the top 20 best-selling cars in this country. Oh, that's good to And, know. you know, the A-Class at the moment even even better selling than the One Series. Yeah. Um, I don't know what will happen. I mean, the, the market changes all the time, but um, I know One Series on your channel is a very popular car. I know yeah. that yours is probably the most famous One Series on YouTube. Um, yeah, you know, not, not them, the, view, yeah. the views you've had on that one. Um, so yeah, I, I you know I, I've never personally driven one of those, but 
my mother actually had three BMWs in a row. And that's maybe something your um, channel viewers may be more interested in. Yeah. Um, she had a um, a very very late um, third generation five series touring. Oh, the E thirty four. That's right. Yeah. It's a ninety October ninety five. So it's very a late, very late one. Very yeah. late one. Um, yeah. High specification. It was um, an SC automatic. Oh, lovely. Um, panoramic sunroof. Um, parking sensors, air conditioning, for some reason just a tape player, um, BBS alloys, oh, um, yeah. nice dark blue. Now this was actually ordered by a friend of hers who even had the cream leather sports seats put in. Oh, so lovely. little little electric bolsters that went in and out. Very nice. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was all right. Although it did suffer from this weird problem that, that I know that engine suffers from, where the car would just cut out for no reason. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, there's a certain uh, um, Mr. Colden, rubbish mechanic. You look his channel up on YouTube. Yeah, who's had a few BMWs in the past. Um, once told me what the issue sort of it, what, what it was. It was something to do with, with the, the throttle or something like that. And, oh, okay. um, yeah. Sometimes it's they just would it just would cut out um, on some like a motorway, which is a bit, a bit dangerous. It's scary. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the reasons my mother got rid of the car in the end was because it was it was doing things like that. Um, and then she went um, for another BMW because she quite liked the way they drove. I mean, yeah. um, certainly the older BMWs, but you know, which were exclusively rear-wheel drive. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know the Active Tour and the new One Series aren't, but you know, this is the days of the 34, and then you know, the the three series that she then got was the two, a late 2005 320D SE. Oh, the E9. E90. Yeah, it was a very early one of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a, a a very interesting color. It was kind of grey, stroke green, stroke purple. Oh, lovely. I yeah. don't know. I don't know what you call the color, but it was different in different light. It looks sort of grey as well. I don't know what it. I think it said green on the um, on on the V5. Okay. Um, she got that. What, it, well, it was four years old. It, it had done ninety nine thousand miles. It was a obviously a company car. Somebody that somebody bought for their business. Yeah. And um, she really loved it. She she still talks about the car today. Uh, yeah. um, I think it's still on the road. Actually, it's done some ridiculous mileage. Um, the only thing I would I, I didn't like about it was the one touch indicators. I absolutely hate one touch indicators. Oh, I like them now. I, I didn't at first. I, I think BMW stopped using them now. I think they've, they've, they've stopped using them now, which um, you know, um, Vauxhall Opel used them for a while too. Yeah. It's a sort of thing in, I don't know, in the 2000s that the German companies experimented with. Yeah. And um, I'm not a massive fan of them, although you know, I've, I've driven an Aster H, which has the, the same system, and the Vectra C. Yeah. A, a, yeah, a Vectra C, and they have those too. You, you get used to them, but I don't like them. I also didn't like the fact that the car um, had a lot of kind of automatic bits on it. It had. Um, automatic lights and wipers. I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of those. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, it make you lazy. It does make you lazy. Although she liked it and she had cruise control. Um, then she changed the car because it was getting. Because she uh, was doing quite high mileage at the time. She changed it for another E90, but the facelift E90. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, that was a 2010 um, 320D Touring. Um, SE Business Edition. Oh, lovely! Which lovely. had um, it's, it's still it's still around. I mean, one of my friends owns it now. Um, leather interior, sat nav. Although bizarrely, no cruise control. Okay. So it, in some ways it was better, in some ways it was worse. You need to send me some photos of yeah, these. Yeah, no, oh. I don't think it had automatic lights. I don't think it had cruise, uh, no cruise control. So he's, he's still he's still got it. My friend's got it now, and he's been running it a few years. Oh, very nice. Um, then she, because of course the ultra low emission zone um, sort of came in, and well, the reports of it came in, in 2017. And she and I got rid of our diesel cars, and we both got brand new petrol cars. Yeah. Um, and my mother went away from BMW because one of the things we noticed when we we did we did go and try if a, a three series yeah. of the last generation because it's, it's, it's been replaced with a G twenty is it G twenty new one yeah the, the, it was a F, I think it was F thirty then it was the new yeah. G series yeah yeah the the, the, G, the G that's just come out is a different model this is with the previous one yeah and unfortunately this is really more to do with the dealership as opposed to the car they didn't have one with a diesel engine in it. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, petrol. It didn't have. It didn't have a three series petrol. It had a four series petrol. Ah, uh, see. And both the the three series touring we tried, which had a diesel engine, and the four series were M Sports. So they had really, really firm firm ride. Firm yeah. ride. And my mother hated it, and also the fact that in the M Sport um, touring, it was a dark headliner. Okay. Yeah. And it was just too dark inside, and so the suspension was too firm, um, and it was too dark inside, and. 
they didn't treat her particularly. We went to the Mercedes dealership and they had exactly the same type of model that she would have actually bought herself yeah. um, in the same colour. And, you know, she's just like, well, I want... I, I think I'll go for the Mercedes. It's, it just makes a difference, really, when you're buying a car as to what experience you you have, as opposed, especially when you're spending twenty to thirty thousand pounds on a car. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Some more questions. Just trying to find them. Um, what yeah. was What was your first car? Uh, first car I had was a Mark II Volks sorry Mark III Volkswagen Polo. Um, I think they call it the Six N. Okay, that's cool. Oh yeah, another one. Yeah, yeah. nineteen ninety eight. It was a uh, bright green one point four CL. I had that in two thousand and one, and I had it about four and a half years. Oh well. Wow. But I, I had two other cars during the time I had the Polo. Polo just just been kind of kept, but I had other cars at the same time as well as that one. Okay. Um, they're decent cars. I mean, you know, they're, they're absolute bangers in this country. You know, they they they're, they're worth nothing. Yeah. Um, now the Mark Twos are worth a little bit. The Mark Threes aren't worth anything really anymore. But they're nice cars, though. I do. They like were, yeah. They're one of the best of that type of car at the time. At the time, yeah. And what do you drive now? Uh, my wife has a 2014 MG3 1.5 style. Um, that car we've had a long time now. We've had it over three years. Yeah. Um, that's featured on my channel an awful lot. And a few other channels too. I see. Uh, yeah, a lot of channels have reviewed that car. Um, I did also drive um, the new model MG3 because MG Motor UK um, very kind of gave me a press car to drive for a week. So I drove a new model MG3 as well, and as well as loads of other MGs. Um, the channels got quite sort of um, modern MG focused towards yeah. the end of last year, which is not a bad thing. They make decent cars. Um, yeah, quite a lot of your subscribers love the MG. Yeah, they, they love um, the, particularly the MG ZS EV and the yeah, MG yeah. HS. Men's. <laughs> yeah. And what was the other car you had? I have a 2017 set Toledo 1 litre TSI Excellence. Oh, that's a lovely car. Yeah, it's a, it's a facelift Toledo, uh, Toledo Mark IV. They only made them for a year. Um, most of those are Excellence models. It's got things like LED headlamps and part leather seats and um, tons of recognition and cruise control and yeah my yeah. my f20 is quite basic compared <laughs> it is it's got loads of stuff in it and it, they, at the time they were available for a huge discount because Seat supposedly just didn't want them yeah they didn't want to get rid of them and so you know i um i got mine for an absolute bargain and i love it what's the best car and worst car you've owned um the the Seat's one of the best cars i've owned okay um i'm not sure it's the best but it's one of the best ones i've had um, the the worst car I've owned, um, most unreliable car I've had, it was a toss up between the 1980 Triumph Dolomite 1500 SE that I had, yeah. that was not reliable, it's British Leyland though, so it's not surprising, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the 2004 Rover 45 1.4 Club SE okay. that I had, which um, had already had one head gasket, and then within three years, three years of me having it, the head gasket went again. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah but th th at the time this was early. 2010s I had that car and they were worth absolutely nothing yeah it's crazy they're still worth nothing but they have a certain kind of appeal now at the time nobody wanted them yeah um, and mine being a, a, a sort of a facelift 45 um, those were even worse in terms of the electrical systems and things like that uh, it, it was not a, a, a reliable car at all but I did still quite like it and I've had five other Rovers since. Oh well yeah, you do um, love your Rovers don't I you? I do, I do love Rovers. Um, I liked your Rover 600 that you took up to yeah, Centipod. I, I, that, that was a really cheap Rover. <laughs> um, it's amazing what you can buy for very little money in this country. Yeah. Um, the other sort of car that was really bad that I owned, I mean it was a, a Centipod car so those are a bit different. I buy them for not much money in terms of Centipod and sell yeah. them for, again for you know, hopefully a profit, but sometimes not. It was a, a 1993 Proton 1 1.3 uh, MPI wow. GLS uh, saloon, which I paid 200 quid for. That's amazing. Took the Santa Pod and um, sold the 300 quid, I think it was. That's good. I didn't make a profit on it, though, because I, I did a bit of work on it. But, um, yeah, that that was... They're not great cars, those. Um um, they really aren't. They really aren't great. They, they, they're, they're funny, but they're not. They're not good cars, really. Yeah. And the last question: um, the best and worst car on your channel. Uh, the worst car on my channel that I've, I've, I've driven without a doubt is the, 90, the 2008 Peugeot 207. Oh, okay. That was an awful car. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely awful car. Um, 
I've had a lot of hate on that video as well because oh, really? I, I I absolutely slated it because uh, my friend who owns who owns it, I think she's still got it actually. Yeah. Um, she gave me total license to just lay into it. She wasn't <laughs> precious about it or anything, and she uh, just said, you know, say what you want. So I did, and um, that was the consequence of of it. It was sort of funny. Yeah. Um, Another car I don't like really is Nissan Juke. I'm not very fond of those. Um, Nissan Puke, I call it. Nissan Puke, Nissan Joke. <laughs> yeah. um, they're not. The thing is, is that they they sell a lot of them in this country, and I know yeah. you can even buy them in Russia. But if taxis, you, but they're very small in the back. Yeah, if you if you look at another car, I don't know, Sanyong Tivoli, Skoda Kamiq, MG ZS, something like that. Yeah. All of them tend to be cheaper and have more space. And actually, have um, certainly in terms of a first generation car, which had only just gone off sale, um, they have, they had much better equipment and entertainment systems. Um, the the boot and the rear space on a, on, a, on a Duke is quite compromised. Yeah, they drive okay. There's nothing wrong with them, but you couldn't get them with the sort of you know modern engines like a sort of downsized one liter engine, which is in a new model Duke. Um, I, I just I, I just personally didn't like the styling. Um, the other thing, of course, as well, is the one I drove was bright yellow, which just wasn't really to my taste. But, you know, I, I try to be as objective as I can in these things, and uh, styling is a very, a, very, a very subjective thing. So yeah. that is a disadvantage, but the other, there were lots of other things I didn't like about it too. Um, so yeah, that's probably the worst the worst car you'll see on the, cha on the channel in terms of, you know, the sort of modern ones for, for 207. Yeah. Um, though a lot of people on on YouTube, you'll see that they have one car that they they've tested and they really didn't like. Yeah. And for me, it was the two hundred seven. I think the last decent Persia, in my opinion, was the two hundred six. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if even that was. Yes. If, if that was about too good to be honest, dude. I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of them. Two hundred fives, four hundred fives. Oh, yeah. Lovely, yeah. Um, four hundred six. 406, 306, we're getting... Towards the end of there. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. I've driven a 306. I found it quite disappointing. Yeah, I've never driven one. Yeah, I found it quite disappointing. I mean, it was supposed to be like a 205. And 205s, 205s are great. I mean, they are, you know, not, not pretentious cars. I mean, even the GTI is not pretentious. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cheap, lightweight... The fun car. If you crash, you die. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's that sort of thing with cheap interior plastics. You know, it doesn't have to be anything else. When they started to introduce, you know, more sophisticated cars like the four hundred six, and even to an extent the three hundred six, which really kind of was just a larger two hundred five. Um, the the interiors on on the three hundred six aren't very nice. The gear changes aren't particularly good, and um, they suffer from this terrible problem where. The 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 um the rear of, of of the inside of a car will just rot away oh, okay. behind the trim because there's a water leak problem on them and you can't see it. The MOT is better won't necessarily see it. And the first thing you'll know is if you have a if you brake sharply and there's somebody back, <laughs> the rear seat belt mounting will just come away because it's hey. rusted away. Yeah. So um that that's the reason why three of sexes for me aren't great. Um also I've driven a Citroen Saxo, um which is a car I passed my test in and I drove one again recently. And they're kind of fun but they have a very cramped pedal box and yeah I can't drive them at all my feet are too yeah yeah wide. It, they're offset and they're tiny. Um and the one I passed is don't even have power steering. Yeah. So in terms of like a retro car to kind of have a bit of fun in like a modern classic type thing, the um the Saxos and the one sixes are quite like are quite good fun. But if you look at them from the point of view of saying I want a safe you know, reliable car for say, like I don't know, my son or daughter to pass a test or something. I'd recommend getting something else. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on my channel today. No problem. I think this video is quite long. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah, it is long. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and I shall leave all um, Joseph's details in the comment in the um, description box down below. And um, yeah, down there. So yeah, <laughs> I'm, yes. I am here. Yeah, I am. Hello, sir. <laughs> thank you so much, and take care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>